Yo, what's up? Long tie here. Today, I'm going to talk about my top two must-have flavor pairing books for cocktails. First up is the Flavor Bible. As you can see, there's two versions here. The one in the middle is a vegetarian edition, and the one to my far left here is a meat edition. If you had to decide between the two Flavor Bible editions, which one should you get? I would definitely get the vegetarian version just because it's thicker and packed with more information. But if you want to do fat wash with, let's say, pork or duck fat, then definitely the meat edition would be a great one to have as a compliment. If you are new to cocktails, I have a fat washing video which teaches you how to infuse oils and fat into spirits. Be sure to click on that link above for more information on how to fat wash. All the examples I'm showing you today will be from the vegetarian version. The flavor bible lists each featured ingredient in alphabetical order, and under each featured ingredient, the book will list key aspects pertaining to the ingredient. For example, miso in general lists flavor, volume, what it is, nutritional profile, calories, protein, techniques as key aspects for miso. Every featured ingredient will have different key aspect information. However, volume and flavor will be listed under each featured ingredient. Flavor describes the taste of the ingredient, while volume will describe how loud or quiet the ingredient is in pungency. Ingredients in bulk cap are highly recommended and are very strong pairings. For miso, you see carrots, ginger, and also mushrooms in bulk caps, showing that they are fabulous and amazing strong pairings for miso. Already, I'm thinking about using ginger and miso in syrup forms, and then using sherry to mimic the umami flavor of the mushroom. For the spirit, I'll probably go with a sweet potato based soju for my base spirit. Here you see lemon in bold lowercase letters. It's showing you that lemon is a great pairing for miso, but it's not as strong and amazing as carrots or ginger. You notice the list of ingredients go from lemongrass to lotus root up here. The list of ingredients is in alphabetical order. As you can see, there's no lime juice as a pairing with miso, so I would definitely start with lemon juice for my cocktail. Plain taste ingredients are good recommendations but they are not as strong of a pairing as ingredients in bold lowercase letters. At the end of each feature ingredient, there's a series of ingredients called flavor infinities. And these flavor infinities are essentially strong pairings that work well with one another. The bold lowercase flavor infinities are a stronger series of pairings than the plain flat ones. What's great about the flavor infinities is that you can create your own flavor infinity by substituting ingredients within the flavor infinities. Maybe you can substitute shiso for ginger or perhaps sesame for carrots. The flavors will still be compatible as long as you bounce flavors within the flavor affinity list. The flavor bible is amazing because you can choose your feature ingredient and then choose which accent ingredients you want to pair with that featured ingredient based on the list that's given in the book. Since the flavor bible lists ingredients in a linear way, it takes the guesswork out for you, making it easy for you. My second favorite flavor pairing book is called The Flavor Matrix. The Flavor Matrix focuses on ingredients which share similar molecular structures. Each ingredient has its own set of volatile compounds which give food its flavor. The Flavor Matrix uses the percentage of volatile compounds between two ingredients. The higher the percentage of volatile compounds the ingredients have in common, the better the pairing. The Flavor Matrix is a pie chart with a featured ingredient in the center. The book lists the featured ingredient as a group of ingredients such as tropical fruit, or it will list the ingredient as a single ingredient such as beets. The chart is broken down further by subcategories here. Fruity is a subcategory here, which is broken down even further by citrus subcategory. And the subcategories are listed here. The book gives a detailed explanation of the subcategories for those who want to get geeky about the compounds. You have floral, fruity, pheno, mallard, terpene, marine, sour, savory, vegetal, alcohol, sulfur, dairy, and pungent. Some of the subcategories are broken down even further like vegetal. Vegetal is broken down into earthy, fruit-like, green, herbaceous. Each subcategory will list a few examples for the subcategory. Herbaceous lists tropical fruit, mustard, chicken, and cumin. Going back to the chart, you'll see complementary ingredients branching out from the subcategories here. you also notice concentric rings. The concentric rings show the percentage of common volatile compounds that the featured ingredient and the complementary ingredient share in common. 
The far outer edge denotes 100% compatibility and the outer edge of the subcategory is 0%. The concentric rings go from 0% to 100% in 10% increments. In this example, lemon bond will be the weakest pairing because it's closest to 0% compatibility, while hops will be the strongest one since it's closest to 100% compatibility. Let's take a look at berry as a feature ingredient. You can see the subcategories which I mentioned earlier such as mallard, terpene, marine, sour, vegetal, alcohol, sulfur, dairy, floral, and so on. And then you can see that vegetal is also broken down even further to herbaceous, green, fruit-like, and earthy. Then the subcategories are broken down into complementary ingredients. Allspice has about an 18% compatibility with berry here, and persimmon and plum has a 60% compatibility with berry. The flavor matrix also lists main subtypes, best pairings, surprise pairings, and substitutes that you can substitute for a berry. Already I'm thinking about berries and pomegranate as great pairings. And since strawberry can be substituted for kiwi or vice versa, what about kiwi and pomegranate? And under the surprise pairings, we saw strawberry, mushroom, and cumin. So how about maybe, I don't know, kiwi and cumin? The back of the book dives a bit deeper into the featured ingredient surprise pairings. Let's look at beef. The chart is broken down into four columns. The first column is the pairing of the featured ingredient, beef, along with the complementary ingredient. And the complementary ingredients in our case will be cacao, beer, cabbage, and grape. The second column is the common compounds, which the feature ingredient and the complementary ingredient share amongst one another. The aromas are attributed to the common compounds. The last column shows a list of ingredients which share the same common compound. If you look at beef and cacao, you'll see that tamarind and beef share the same common compound, acetophenone. Beer and cacao share the same common compound, isopentanol. You could substitute tamarind for beef to pair with cocoa, or perhaps even experiment with cocoa and corn, and maybe even use corn whiskey for the corn aspect of flavor of your cocktail. I love the flavor matrix because each feature ingredient has a surprise pairing, and these surprise pairings help me create more unique and interesting flavor combos for my cocktails. Flavor pairing books are great resources to bounce flavor around. I have a flavor pairing video which teaches you how to use the substitution method to create unique and interesting flavor profiles. If you haven't checked it out yet, be sure to click on the link above me for more information on how to bounce flavors around. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button for more booze related knowledge. Until then, peace out.